Hello guys, welcome to online web tutor presented by Profitex Sessions team. I am Sanjay. We are learning WordPress plugin development tutorial using Boilerplate. This is our part number 2. Inside this video session guys, we will see that how can we proceed video by video inside this playlist. It means that we are going to discuss about playlist plans. In the very first part, we had discussed or seen that how can we install the latest version of WordPress in our local system. As well as we had discussed about the basic concept of using boilerplate, features of boilerplate or why we use it boilerplate for the plugin development. Now inside this video, we have a plan by the execution, by the help of execution of that plan actually, we are develop our plugin inside boilerplate framework. So if we go to the next step, now here is the plan, means playlist plans video by video. So from the next stage of this video or the lectures, we are going to follow this playlist plans. So in the next video, we will hopefully about see about folder structure and files of plugin generator. It means we will understand about boilerplate folders and files structure. In the next videos, we will see about concept of global WPDB object. WPDB object basically is a global object which is used to perform or operate with the database tables. We will get the access to complete get, fetch or it means we are going to perform all the current operations with the database tables by the help of WPDB object. This is the global object provided by WordPress. After discussing about global WPDB object, we will see about plugin activation hook. Plugin activation hook means that when we install plugin or activate, the actions or the hook triggered is called plugin activation hook. The operations will which will be performed at the plugin activation comes under plugin activation hook. It means if we want to install or let's say create dynamic tables, dynamic pages, dynamic posts and so on at the time of plugin activation, all will which will be covered inside this plugin activation hook. So in the next videos, we will see that how can we create dynamic tables to our database table or the database we have created if I back to Chrome browser. So while installing this latest version of WordPress, we have created a database if you have remembered something known as plugin underscore boilerplate. So in the next videos, we will see that how can we create dynamic tables inside this database on the plugin activation. As well as we will see that how can we create dynamic pages inside this tab after plugin activation. We are going to learn about the tables creation as well as pages creation at the time of plugin activation. After plugin activation, now we have another hook called plugin deactivation. It means that when we uninstall plugin from our WordPress setup or deactivate, then this hook will be triggered. So at the time of plugin deactivation, if we want to delete all the tables, all the pages, what we have created at the first stage that is plugin activation hook, we will delete from our tables from this plugin deactivation hook. All the performs which we want to perform at the time of deactivation comes under this plugin deactivation hook. In the next, we will see about plugin menus, submenus, positions, and the icons. If we back to our Chrome browser or let's admin panel, so now here as we can see that these are called menus. What we are seeing called posts, media, pages, comments, and so on. So these are called menus. Now if we hover on the post section, now we are seeing about all posts add new, categories and tags, these are sub-menus. So we will see that when we install our plugin or activate inside this 
WordPress panel then how can we make a menu for that and as well as how can we generate sub menus of that plugin. Now here as we can see that a icon is there for each menu so we are going to also attach our custom icon or let's say a uh, icon for our menu for our plugin. Also as we can see here the positions are defined for these menus by default by the WordPress called Posts, Media, Pages, Comments, Appearances and so on. So these are the menus actually placed on a position. So we will see that if we want to place our menus and sub menus of a plugin at any position, so how can we operate that? So inside that video, we will see about the plugin menus, sub menus, positions and icons, how can we generate at the time of plugin installation. Now in the next lectures, we will cover about operating with Ajax, CSRF token, sanitization methods as well as CRUD operations with database table. In the Ajax part, we will see that how can we connect our plugin with the database table or simply say that how can we operate with the Ajax methods in our plugin development. We will see that when the admin login, it means we have a authenticated user, then how can we operate or develop our Ajax methods as well as if there is no user logged in, it means in case of unauthenticated user, how can we operate with Ajax methods. So in both the situations, we are going to cover that in case of authentication, in case of unauthentication. After Ajax, we are going to add a CSRF token. It's a token which is sent to a request to valid at the server side. So we are going to cover CSRF inside this playlist. After that, we will discuss about sanitization methods. These are the methods which basically applied to a request variable or let's say input parameters to sanitize and protect our values from unwanted values or script values. In some cases, the user inputs inside a form, let's say a script value or a script tag. So how can we protect the script value to be inserted or inside the database. So before insertion, we are going to apply some sanitization methods to protect those data to be inserted in our database tables. So after covering all these things, next we are going to perform about the major operations called CRUD operation with database table. In the CRUD operation, C stands for create. It means we are going to see that how can we create our data and save to our database table. For the R section, S stands for read. It means how can we fetch the data from our database tables and populate, render inside tables of WordPress. U stands for update. It means how can we update any data specifically by using our unique ID to a table. Now D stands for delete. Simply we are going to delete some record specifically by using some piece of unique data. So after covering all these major operations, we also have many more miscellaneous topics. So we are going to cover video by video about each and every section of plugin development inside Boilerplate framework. So if I back to Chrome browser, now this is the latest version guys actually we had installed in our very first part video. So if I back to Appearance tab, now in the latest version actually a theme has been developed by default by WordPress developers call 2020. So if I click on activate button, so successfully we have activated about the current version theme something 2020. So if I go to its front end layout, now this is how can we see and by default, when we had installed this WordPress setup to our local system, so by default, total number of tables generated is something 12. So inside this video, 
also we will discuss that how can we create own our own custom tables inside this list and increase the count of number of tables. So inside this video session guys, if you have any doubt then please drop your comment. I will keep my reply as soon as possible. So for this video session guys, thank you for watching and have a great day.